Just like in part six, we can use the margin of error formula to obtain the necessary sample size that would be required in order to get a particular margin of error with a specified confidence level. So here you can see again the formula being rearranged uh, and solved for, instead of being solved out for M, being solved out for N, our sample size. I did notice a couple of students on the homework uh, plugging into the original formula and then doing a lot of algebra to get this out answer out. Um, there is no reason to be doing that, especially because we have this formula on our formula sheet. So if we go to the formula sheet, we can actually see we have a sample size set up in either direction here. So let's go ahead and try out a problem. First exercise here says, how often do you bathe? Um, a very outdated Gallup poll asked Americans how many times they bathe during the week. And we're looking for how many subjects. So immediately we go, all right, I need to know my N. Um, that will be needed in order to estimate the average. So we know we're doing this for a mean. Uh, number of times Americans bathe during the week with a margin of error of plus or minus 0 0.5. So our margin of error, we want to be within 0 0.5. Uh, number of times and our confidence level is 99% and then we get the most contradictory sentence ever uh, initial survey results indicate that Sigma is 1.8 um, the fact that this is a survey and that it just indicates it doesn't mean this uh, is a big red flag that this is not truly Sigma frankly this is s um, but we're going to go ahead, pretend this is the real deal population standard deviation, um, and do our problem. Uh, just so we can see what this formula is like. So again, this is not the real, I mean, this does not make sense that we would have sigma from an initial survey. That's the population standard deviation. But ignoring that discrepancy, <coughs> the formula sheet tells us we're using this formula because we have a sigma. So we're going to just copy that down on the next page. N is equal to Z star times sigma all over our margin of error. And then the entire quantity gets squared. A big mistake students make is forgetting to square the whole thing because they do this in steps in their calculator instead of all at once. Our Z star, we're going to go look up on our T table. We don't need the T's, but we can grab the T. We know we need a 99% which has a corresponding Z star of 2.576. So 2.576. Um, our sigma is 1.8, and this is all over our margin of error, and then we're gonna square everything. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, calculator, toss this in there. So two, you have two options, you get 2.576 times 1.8 divided by 0.5, and then just do not, I did not type the five, I think. Um, then just don't forget that you need to square this. You can get out your value. Um, alternatively, just do it all at once. Oops. That way you have no, there's no chance that you forget, or if it's a multiple choice that you grab the wrong answer, just do it all together. So we get 85.9999999. So even if we were not remembering, uh, just like before, we always need to round up to the next whole number. So this means that we need to take 90 subjects in order to be able to estimate the number of times someone showers, uh, average number of times someone showers per week, uh, plus or minus that 0.5. All right, that's it.